Hey everyone, today is Friday, October 25th. I have a new chair. I have to bake a cake today. But also, um, since Wednesday, I've had basically one video flagged a day, so three if you're keeping track, of uh, for copyright notifications, blocking worldwide or what have you. And normally, you know, I would totally get that. However, um, these videos have been on YouTube for nearly two years now. They are Star Wars Galaxies videos, so the thing they are about no longer exists as a legitimate product being sold by anybody. Um, notwithstanding, I've never put any advertisements on it. Um, but also, I don't get really any views, and I don't think anyone would rip the audio from said videos in order to make soundtracks off of them, because I'm talking most of the time. So it really boggles my mind as to why somebody, or something, if it's some crawling program, has decided all of a sudden, you know, this video has music that we have rights to. No. Or this video too. No. I mean, what the hell? Like, originally, the intro video for Star Wars Galaxies, two years ago, when I put it up originally, was banned for view in Germany. I don't know, maybe Germany has some problem with stormtroopers or something. That's why they don't like Star Wars music over there. I have no idea. Uh, yes, I get that it was culturally insensitive, but right now I'm cranky. Um, but, you know, I really don't get this. I really don't get their their need to exercise their corporate strength by basically telling me, oh, you were walking through a cantina that happened to be also in a Star Wars world, and it happened to be playing John Williams' Cantina Number no. 2 track from Star Wars from 1977. So, um, yeah, we're going to block your whole video worldwide because of coincidental music in a Star Wars setting. Yeah, that's basically made me cranky all week. Um, I had to put up with it Wednesday, and it made no sense to me then. I had to put up with it yesterday, it made no sense to me then. Today, I find one of my, I think the first video for Star Wars Galaxies that I did uh, is muted. Um, just period, muted. Um, you know, I, I'm... Also, there's a, another question behind all of this. Uh, if these people keep flagging these videos, and yes, I am addressing each copyright notice as it happens, um, am I going to lose my account because of all of this? Like, because I heard something about if you get three flags, you're out. Like, your account is banned on YouTube. None of this is intentional. Like, seriously. If I had known I was going to get flagged for copyright on music alone, I would have muted the fucking game. Like, there wouldn't have been any music. And then they would have had to nail me on something different, like, I don't know, showing off the game. Like, at this point, the game and it is 50% of the video. Because the other 50% is me talking over it. And if they mute the stretch where I'm talking over it, and there happens to be music in the background, at that point, it just becomes the video. So what's the, 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 the gameplay footage? So what's the point? I don't get this. I really don't get this. I, I don't care enough about what's going on here. Uh, because it's just stupid corporations being stupid is what it is, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I'm sure if I was ever creative enough to make my own music, I would want to cripple people around the world who tried to make videos that incidentally happened. I just don't get this. Like, I'm walking through a place and there happens to be Star Wars Cantina music playing overhead. My video is going to be muted? What the fuck? Like, I mean, it's, it's basically that's essentially what's happening here. I was walking through the cantina, or I was in the cantina. What happens in a Star Wars cantina? There is Star Wars cantina music in the cantina. I'm sorry, that's a side effect of the environment. If you have a problem with that, how about you go over there in the corner where no one knows you're there? I mean, Jesus. 
Oh, uh, on top of all of that, I barely got into PAX East this year, which uh, tells me that next time around, I'm not even going to bother. Uh, it's it's turned into a super con convention where uh, it's too much of a hassle to even bother. They announced the tickets. That was the difference between last year and this year. They announced when tickets were going for sale, and they announced that they were going for sale noon on October 23rd, this past Wednesday. So here I am, you know, a couple minutes to noon. I've got the website ready to go. You know, I click refresh, you know, shift, click, refresh. And for the next 15, 18 minutes, I'm refreshing the site and I'm getting nowhere. I'm, I close the window. I bring the site back up. It's crashed. I close it down. I bring it back up. It's still down. I wasn't able to get through. And then I, I'm like, all right, so I guess it's down. Everybody must be having this problem. It's not just me. So I'm going to go to school, I'm going to do my accounting class today, which was at 12.30, and I, I did show up a few minutes late, but that was all right. Um, and I'm sitting in class, and I get a text message, all the three-day passes were sold out. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, how were people even able to buy the passes? Like, the site didn't work. And then um, I'm on Twitter, and I'm talking with people, and they're like, and an article came out. In 35 minutes, all the three-day passes were sold out. That's complete bullshit. Like, the site was hit harder than the Obamacare website. And it crumpled just as badly. Or worse. Yeah, you think the Obamacare website is the only website that has problems like this? You obviously have never been on the internet before when things like this happen. That's why big products like Star Wars The Old Republic uh, do stress tests. That's why Neverwinter did a stress test. Um, so that they could hopefully predict the increase of population. Uh, now, for Star Wars The Old Republic, they did a graduated entrances of people who pre-ordered the game, uh, pre-ordered the collector's edition, pre-ordered, you know, just a standard edition, and so on and so forth. So, like... I got in on this day, my friends got in on this day, and then on this day everybody else was allowed in. That sort of thing. So it was a graduated introduction into the game. Um, but, I mean, you know, obviously I guess you can't do that for things like PAX East because then everything sells out immediately. Like last year, it took over a week for the three-day passes to sell out. At least that's kind of how I remember it. I managed to buy my three-day pass last year uh as soon as the clock hit midnight, basically, because I was like, oh, it's after midnight, you know, I should probably just check the site, see if it's up, click, click, hey, convenient, this time around it was click, click, oh, it's down, I'll try again later, click, what, it's all sold out, so a buddy of mine got me a Saturday, a Friday pass, a Saturday pass, and a Sunday pass, so instead of paying $75, I'm paying $120, that said, though, on the plus side, uh, we are paying... For a hotel room for the two of us, basically the same rate I paid last year for just myself. So that's cool. Um, we're a little farther away from the convention than we want to be, about 1.8 miles. But that's not too bad because it's going to be April in Boston, which should be slightly warmer than March in Boston. Uh, or Boston in March. Um, and... We're taking a flight because apparently the train is stupid expensive, prohibitively so, in my opinion. We would have spent almost as much on the the train ride, round trip, for the two of us, uh, as the hotel. So, like, the hotel is like 700-something. The train would have been about $690 round trip for two people. And we would have spent six and a half to nine hours on the train each way. Whereas, the flight is $360 for two people, and uh, it's an hour and a half flight there, and an hour and a half flight back. And I live next to an airport, and the airport is next to the convention hall. So, yeah, fuck you, Amtrak, and all trains everywhere, because that's prohibitive. That's stupid prohibitive. I, I don't understand it. Uh, there are a lot of things in this world I don't understand. Anyways, I've gone on a rant long enough. I need to head to the store and get some supplies for this cake I'm making. It's a two-ingredient cake. Yellow cake mix, pumpkin pie filling. Filling? Pumpkin... Pumpkin stuff. Canned pumpkin. And then, in the oven, 350 for 28 minutes-ish. And 
done. Uh, but I'm going to be adding pumpkin spice and I'm going to put vanilla icing on top. I need to see if we have a smaller cake pan because the one we've been using is like 8 inches on a side and I need 7 because it, it, the, the cake mix plus the pumpkin doesn't make enough to make more much more than a, about an inch thick cake for an 8 by, I want to say 12 cake pan. And I need like a 7 by 11 just to get it a little thicker. So, uh, little things. Also, I'm still rubber banding in Star Trek Online, Neverwinter, and Champions Online, so thank you, Verizon, for not solving your problems in Boston. So, until next time.